Hey everyone, today we're gonna go feed the tadpoles. So I bought some romaine lettuce, threw it in the freezer, and now outside it'll shatter like glass as I crunch it up. And when it hits the surface of the water, it'll mushify and the tadpoles can easily eat it. If it was just plain lettuce, it would have to be sit in the water to get soggy for quite a while before they could easily eat it. You could also boil it, but I like to just put it in here overnight. Then I don't have to clean up any kind of pots and pans. Let's go on outside. All right, here we are. It's gonna shatter when we start running our hands through it. Let's see, there's a frog right there. Okay, let's like that. I love that. Look at that. Look how we shatter it. Throw it right in there. I oh, love that. Let's go over to the other tadpoles. They'll love it too. I just mowed the lawn. The tadpoles love eating the lawn clippings too. That get into the ponds. We'll come back around to these ponds in like 10 minutes and they should all be up and eating that. Another pond. Right on in. Crunch, crunch. Over here to the other pond. This one, the water's starting to get a little cloudy. The other ponds, I have sprinkler timers set up, and for three hours, every three days, the sprinkler timer will lightly add water to the pond, and it slightly overflows down the little drain I made. I made a little spillway so the tadpoles are less likely to get flushed out. Just like this pond. That right there is from in the basement. It's Instead of having a sump pump, it's a gravity drain. It made more sense for how high my water table is. For like half of the year, the sump pumps had to turn on every five minutes. And that was very risky. If those things fail, you're going to have feet of water in the basement. But this one also has a drain. It just goes off here into the woods through this pipe. See, I got a filter in there so we don't lose any tadpoles when this thing is surging with a whole bunch of water. But yeah, I got a hose in my utility room. I'll just stick it down in the sump pump pit and that's how we flush this pond out, which is 6,000 gallons. I'll just leave it on overnight and we can get about 8, 9 gallons a minute out of it. So it'll flush out like half of this water and make it clear up a little bit. Although there's a little bit of murkiness they actually like, we'll do a water quality test and that'll tell us if there's actually anything wrong with it or if it's just an algae bloom. Regular algae is not toxic. It's not like the blue-green algae. It will spike the nitrate level or maybe nitrite. I always mix up those words, but I believe that the red algae is actually toxic, although there's water beetles living in there. The only reason, oh, there's a couple water beetles, so I, maybe it's not that toxic, but... In here, there's no tadpoles anymore. Birds pick them off too easily in the silver one. But in the black one, you can't really see them much, so they live on. We already got some tadpoles coming up, munching on the lettuce. We'll come back here in a little bit longer. We'll give them like a half an hour to all discover the food. And I did notice a large reduction in the tadpoles from snakes going in there and eating them. And... The frogs, we actually have a lot more frogs despite the uptick in snake sightings. We have a lot of garter snakes, a lot of ribbon snakes, and I believe what is a milk snake. It'd be kind of cool if a rat snake showed up, but they're pretty rare around here. I've never actually seen one. It's mostly garter snakes, which they're easy to catch, but they'll usually poop all over you to get you to drop them because they think you're a predator. So nature has a way of balancing it. We raised the frog population, now we have a higher snake population. But up here, we don't have any venomous snakes. So, I like the snakes. We don't have anything like that. We have to drive a couple hundred miles south to even have the risk of a rattlesnake. So I mowed the lawn today, this little crevice between the garden and the pond. The mower doesn't fit through there. Got a good deal on a riding mower, so there's some areas that'll have to be done manually still because usually it takes about four hours to mow the property but I cut that down to about an hour and 20 minutes by getting a rider instead see over here the grass clippings they were nibbling on that a little bit but they're pretty tough like this stuff here is very soft because it was frozen 
You can see there's a lot of them in the big pond coming up. See all the little mouths? See them all nibbling right there? They love this stuff. And watermelon, it was like a slow release. Yeah, up there, they're having a frenzy. I just wait until another 20 minutes when more of them come up here. I decided to feed them now. It's getting into the evening because the sun level's low. This thing's not running to disturb them while they're eating. The fountain's off. It should not turn back on again. Maybe the little frog one will turn on because that has an oversized panel. That's possible. Yeah, see, there's the spillway in this pond. Tadpoles, when they're small, could fit through that, but I've never found them where the pipe comes out on the ground. Never. But when that does go, this grass will pile up around the edges and kind of prevent that too. But yeah, there's hundreds of them already up here eating it, which is nice to see. The stacked glass windows, those things look really cool in here. We had one massive frog I showed in a short video, but after a rainstorm it went out hunting and never came back. It's either at another pond, somewhere in the woods, or it got eaten when it was out. Look at that, that's so cute. Look at them all eating the lettuce. I love feeding these guys. On a daily basis, I'll come out here, throw fish food in, different vegetables, cucumbers. They love that kind of stuff. Probably one more time before they're turning into frogs. I'll probably give them one more watermelon treat in a few weeks. But I think in a month, six weeks, they'll all be developed enough where they'll be turning into frogs and leaving. Every frog at the pond, like see this one here? They're all super fat, see that? Because they're eating all the tadpoles. Same reason we have snakes around. The snakes will be basking around the ponds when it's sunny out, which is nice. Garden's doing well. Pretty soon I'll be growing my own lettuce that will be able to feed them. This whole line right here is iceberg just because I like it better for salads and stuff. That's romaine there. Ah, uh, ah, uh, there's a slug in there eating it. There's strawberries, there's a bunch of them already developing. They'll be ripe in a week or two. The pepper plants and the tomato plants are doing well. There's an eggplant in the back. The cu uh, cucumber plants aren't doing very well at all. They didn't really grow at all. I'm about to transplant the what do you call it? Asparagus in there. I put it in this pot. I didn't think it was going to survive the winter. A lot of people said it wouldn't because my climate's too cold, but it did. And I also have one in the house just in case this didn't survive. I was told it takes a couple years to beef itself up where it can survive the winter, but nope, it survived nicely. So even the one in the house, both of these are going to be planted over here where they can permanently stay. I didn't plant corn this year. It was kind of a waste of space for something like that. Got some mushrooms growing in here. It's been raining a lot. This thing has a sprinkler timer that comes on every morning for 20 minutes. Last year we did it at night. This year switched it to morning so nothing becomes um, gross fungus on it or mildew from it being wet so often. So now it's only going to be wet for an hour or two before the sun comes up. And over here is the well. The forest is going really nice. It looks very lush. I'm noticing uh, as the evergreens die out from bugs and stuff. Everything else is growing in nice. The trees are slowly being replaced. All the little trails I have, I widened them a little bit because the new lawnmower couldn't fit down a lot of them. I also had to make little areas where I can three-point turn and stuff to get it down here. And the main, main reason I switched to a riding mower is because I don't mow the lawn often and sometimes there's areas of the yard just for nature can have them and wildflowers i only mow them once a year or every other year with a push mower it's a pain in the butt it will be stalling out dozens of times running that over but today i was surprised big raspberry bushes the riding mower can just drive over them and i did realize that it's very unpleasant getting a riding mower stuck the manufacturer's weight is 700 pounds, and with rear-wheel drive, it's impossible to give that thing a push when it gets stuck in the mud. So there's a few areas I got to avoid. Maybe I'll get like ATV 
um, tires for it at some point, then maybe that won't happen again. Originally, this property, this was all mowed. This was part of the lawn around these couple of trees used to be mowed. But after four years, this is what grows. This tree here, it's only, no, actually that was probably there, but these other trees, it's only four years worth of growth and they're almost 10 feet tall. Forest really grows in fast when you stop mowing the lawn. Over here's a lot of berry bushes that grow in here. So I've always had a little trail going through here, but now I've learned that the lawn mower can actually run over this stuff that's even chest high without bogging down. So that was the point of getting a machine like that. It doesn't bog down. I thought I was gonna need a brush mower, but just a regular riding mower did the job really nicely. Let's check on the big frog pond. Anything eating the lettuce? Because these tadpoles are slightly less developed since the water is deeper, it's colder, it's not full sun. So these ones don't develop probably until the end of the year when they become frogs because of that. And I don't see anyone eating. They're probably not hungry. This one, again, it looks pretty green. There's lots of natural algae growing. They don't really need the food. They're not really hungry. And you see the watermelon there from a few weeks ago. It's still there because they're not hungry. And they love it when it gets all rotten and kind of nasty like that. Right here I decided I'm not going to trim anything around the trail anymore. Just keeping lots of cover for the frogs to hide in. It's nice. I'm hoping this will turn into little trees and stuff around it. It would be nice to have bushes and stuff surrounding the pond at some point. See up here, I don't mow any of this. Let it grow nice and tall. I do mow here though. I keep little barriers and stuff like this little islands in the yard. Because I'm hoping trees naturally grow and I, it'll shade it out. This area right here, so it's not as big as a pain in the butt with a mower like that, it just made areas it can go through. Like right here's another area that it can go through. I plowed over these bushes that were like three feet tall, didn't bog down at all, but going up this hill, it will spin the tires if it doesn't have speed. This is my blackberry, no, black raspberry patch. I let this stuff grow, it attracts so many birds. Turkeys love to come in here, pick the berries, Back here we finally have water irises blooming. They're very beautiful. Up and over here, that's another, that's a regular raspberry patch and they're all wild. And I make all these access trails so I can come pick the berries too. Have all these little things, because originally this property, this was all part of the lawn. The guy used to mow it in, in the woods slightly around these certain trees, but I'd rather have a thicker forest, so I'm letting it grow in. This area, I do love the berries. Eventually, what naturally happens is when there's a blowdown in the woods, berries and stuff take it over. Then once the trees shade it out, the berry bushes die. It turns back into a forest. This area here, once the little trees start growing, I might just go ahead and mow it down completely. Then the berry bushes will regenerate right from their stumps again. I might do that. Over on this side, there's not many berries, so I'll let that stuff grow in. But it's squishy here. Squishy enough that water irises are growing. Really cool. And that's the little boardwalk trail into the woods because it's just so swampy there all the time, right next to that well. Even the hottest, driest summer, which was a couple years ago on record here, was still the water table was only a couple inches below the ground. Now there's puddles on a typical day. Found this nice little bird bath at a thrift store. That's how much rain we got today, about an inch. Paid 10 bucks for that. And it's right next to a barn swallow's nest, so I see them coming over here sometimes. Anytime I go up and look at the baby birds in the nest, or check it, see if there's eggs or anything, the parents, the barn swallows, will start swarming around my head to get me to go away, making clicking sounds. They don't like my presence, so I don't go over and check on that often. Still got a bunch of tadpoles eating. Oh, look at that. Look at all the little mouths underneath eating it. 
Look at them all from this angle. You can see them a lot better. Nice. Let's go check on the other couple little ponds. Okay, over here. We have a bit more of them eating it. More of them are coming up, but not a super amount because they're not starving or anything. If we want to get huge frenzies of them, I don't really like to starve them unless I'm actually away for a few days. But I usually feed them on a daily basis, so they're not super swarmy. But if you throw a watermelon in there, they love that so much. They'll be a frenzy for that. But it's not the best thing for them. They can have it, but it's not something they should be having every single day. It is very sugary. But every few weeks, we'll throw some watermelon in there. Pretty soon, they're going to get big enough where they start having fear. Even though I'm the one that feeds them, they do get skittish as they start getting bigger. You come over here and they'll all run away, so it's you have to film it from a distance like this with the zoom lens. But they're not at that point yet. And the frogs around my ponds, you see, I can sometimes just grab them and pick them up. They're friendly. They're used to being handled. I got a really high water table. Look at this. Woo! Look at that. It's always squishy over in this area. This little pond, we don't see many coming up, and that's because there's so much natural. You see the vegetation is growing right in the water, the grass growing right in the water. Well, the tadpoles can nibble that and eat it, so they're not super hungry like they have been before. Like last year, they loved everything we put out here, but now that it turns into like this, I'm gonna let the other pond do this too. Let all the grass drape in there. Another month, you won't even be able to tell it's this plastic insert. It'll be pretty well hidden and covered up. Gonna have to do some trimming around the solar panel too. Solar panel runs the teeniest little pump. It's a teeny, teeny little thing. Just trickles through this moss, but that purifies it, keeps it from becoming stagnant. Does anybody know, do barn swallows, would they come over here and eat tadpoles? Because I always see them over here. They might just be drinking from it. I know they're an insect-eating bird. So if you put, like, seed out, they have no interest in that. All right, everyone. It's the next morning. It's a very cloudy day. So the fountain's actually running because it's not the evening. But it's not full sun, so it's not blasting at the moment. Still a lot of lettuce. I still see some nibblers now in the morning. But... There's not as many tadpoles as there was a couple of weeks ago because the tadpoles are eating them. The barn swallow is suspected to be eating them. There's snakes that come in here to eat them. But that's what frogs are. They're a prey animal. And only about, I think, 10% of the tadpoles will even turn into a froglet or even leave the water. And then 1% or less will even go on to reproduce. That's how it is. That's why they have so many tadpoles of frog. I hope today's video was interesting, everyone. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.